Yo, I've been coding for years now, but decided in 2025 I'd start actually shipping side projects. In six days, I built Roast My Thumbnail, a tool that helps you improve your thumbnails by roasting the sh out of them. Getting familiar with various tools helped me to build this very quickly, so today I want to share what my tech stack is and hopefully give some of you some inspiration if you've also been wanting to ship a project. Now, before you can start working on an app, you need an idea. This is something I'm sure a lot of you struggle with, but recently I've been coming up with a lot more high quality ideas and I think the biggest factor in that is I've started working on things just out of my own curiosity. For example, I've had a dashboard boilerplate project which is literally just a repo where I've built authentication, billing, account settings, etc. just so that they can be easily reused later. This is something I started just because I thought it was fun and in that process I started to come across problems which I realized I could solve. The biggest tip I could give you that I wish I heard years ago is maintain a gold mine as a like to call it of project ideas. This doesn't mean they're good though. I force myself to write down at least one every night, even if it's complete dog shit. Like if we look at the definitely not going to build column here, we have rank your favorite NFL players. I, I wrote this down after the Super Bowl because I couldn't think of anything, but that's the sort of thing that's been helping me to come up with better ideas, just spilling anything that comes to mind out into this document. I have this in a list on Notion, but whatever software or piece of paper you use doesn't matter. The idea is to just have a system where whenever you get inspiration, you can quickly jot things down. After locking in this idea, what I thought was the next most important thing was to plan the MVP. MVP is kind of a loose term, because everyone defines it differently. But for me, I'm just thinking a website I can go to where I upload my thumbnail and based on a list of criteria, get roasted on what I did wrong. I then want a page where I can see the previous roasts and that's really it. There's a lot more future ideas I have like continuing to chat with the AI, have multiple revisions, but none of that stuff is really MVP. The goal here is to have a tool I can use to make better thumbnails. That entire process of planning the MVP took me about 30 minutes and then I was on to working on the front end. Next.js was the obvious choice just because I'm familiar with it and I enjoy the developer experience. There's also the benefit of better SEO which kind of makes sense for a tool like this. To style everything I used Tailwind and I remember I used to hate it for a very long time because I hated the look of all the classes within the HTML but after just a few days of giving it a shot I fell in love. I've gotten super fast with it that I can now create basically any layout I have in my head within minutes along with implementing a uniform color setup that I have for all of my different projects. I have this project inside of a mono repo, which might not make sense at first, but the idea is to have any creator tool that I build under one umbrella. This is mainly so I can share components and utilities and not have to copy that code over. For this project, I decided to write the API in Next.js, which for a project of this size, I think makes a lot of sense. Being able to write your backend code in the same language as your front end is a lot more efficient and you can keep things more tightly organized. If this were a much larger project or a proper SaaS application, I would have used Go. It's a backend language I use at school, but I've also been learning it over the last few months and I love it. It's a really performant language and is used in a lot of large scale apps. So at the point that I need a proper backend, that's what I'm leaning to. Go syntax is very simple and the standard library gives you a ton of useful features, meaning there's very few external packages that you need to import. Again though, for the sake of shipping this project in just a week, I'm sticking with Next. For my database, I use Postgres and in this project, I'm hosting it on Neon. I've used Super base in the past, which is a great developer experience. I've also used Postgres on Railway and ran one in a Docker container. The reason I'm going with Neon here though is they have a nice free plan, it's been easy to set up, and they actually let you create 10 separate databases for free, which is great if you want to use them on a variety of projects. It reminds me a lot of Supabase, but they only give you two on the free plan, and they auto-pause. I like to look at my databases inside of Datagrip, but Neon has a really nice web app where you can look at all your projects, see their usage, take a look at your tables, and they even have features like branching, among many others. I hook up to the database using Drizzle, which is a nice TypeScript ORM. You can write schema files in your code base and then generate migrations you can push up with the CLI to easily make changes to your database. So for auth, I decided to use Clerk, mainly because I'm just using sign in with Google and wanted to get that set up as fast as possible. For the app, you don't even need to be logged in to use it, though if you do, I'm increasing the limits for roasts, and that's how you'll be able to get a subscription 
encryption to have much higher limits. I have written my own authentication in the past, used Subabase and WorkOS, which are all solid options. But so far, I will say that Clerk has been the fastest for me to get set up. Now, right now, I don't really have to worry about emails in this project because I'm not doing magic links or anything like that. But if I were, resend would be my go-to choice. They have the simplest email API I found, and they're very focused on making sure you have good email authority so nothing goes to spam. Now, since Roast My Thumbnail has users upload their thumbnails, I want them to be saved, and so the way I'm going to do that is using S3. It can be a little annoying to integrate with at first, but once you get over that, and if you throw the bucket behind a CloudFront CDN, you can serve files really quickly. Now, the last backend feature I need is access to an AI service, and the two I'm testing with right now are 40 Mini and Gemini 2 Flash. They're both pretty cheap, take image input, and can generate structured output, so I think they're a good choice. One of the nice things about having a node backend is you can use the Vercel AI SDK, which is a really nice way to interact with all of these APIs. Now, while I was actually building this app, there's a couple of tools I used that I want to mention. My code editor for TypeScript is Cursor, which is a fork of VS Code with AI built in. I thought it was just hype when I first heard about it, but every month it seems like it gets better and better, and now it's great for helping me write the more repetitive code, or even debugging type issues and giving me a solid starting point for UIs. I try not to rely on it too heavily, even though it is getting really good, because there's still so many times when I'm working with APIs or SDKs, and it starts to hallucinate methods that just don't exist. So especially when you're working with sensitive data like payments, make sure you know what you're doing. I also use Claude in the browser, mostly to ask questions and, and help understand things that I'm implementing. My terminal right now is ghosty, and I really like how simple and fast it is. I'm coming from Warp and iTerm before that, and while both of those terminals are great, I've just enjoyed how simple this one is. Now, for testing my API routes, I use Yak, which is a great local HTTP client that doesn't require a login, is really fast, and is just easy to use. Now, once it's time to actually ship your project and deploy it on the internet, you have a lot of options. For this project, I'm just hosting it on Vercel because it's as easy as connecting my Git repo and it's working. I'll usually host my Go apps on Railway, which is kind of like the Vercel for backend apps, and both platforms are just really convenient to use. There's definitely a case for setting up a VPS because they're really cheap. I've actually done it recently with EC2 for a smaller project, and it is fun to play around with. So that was all of the tech I used to build and ship my first app in just a week. I hope you found this useful, especially because it's not my normal type of content, so I'm sure the quality isn't on the same level, but I enjoy talking about this stuff and want to share more of what I'm working on. If you enjoyed this video, you'll want to watch this one next, where I talk about this laptop here, the 14-inch M4 Max MacBook Pro. It's been my main development machine for the last three months, and I love it, but it might not be right for you. Thanks for watching, and take care.